Hello and welcome to this recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've kind of checked off a few um, items on our to-do list, some things that came to mind. Uh, we've got a pull request in progress, number 115. Uh, we've been working on it for a couple of days. And it essentially involves um, having a local post GIS instance up and running and making it really easy for other developers to spin up a post uh, GIS instance and tear it down when they're done developing for the day, uh, mainly for myself, but if anybody else gets involved with the project, as well as having a, a PG admin, um, per, yeah, just u utility, uh, I'm not sure <laughs> the scope of PG admin is very uh, capable though. Uh, including monitoring your, your da um, database and running queries. So I just thought the combination of PostGIS uh, or Postgres and PostGIS ready-made server and PG Admin would be um, improving the developer experience for this project. And also worked on uh, a follow-up to the OSM to PostGIS importer script. The script previously takes a bunch of shape files and writes them to PostGIS tables, and that works fine. But when we query those shape or those tables, um, they the queries would be very slow because there's no database indexing. So it has to scan every row in the table in order to to find the information we're after. And really, we're querying quite a lot on feature class, the OSM feature class, as well as uh, these geometries, for example, finding overlaps or proximity. Um, so what I did today is the bottom half of this notebook to add indexes. I'll just go through the whole notebook for context. It's not very big. And then we'll just take a look at the Docker Compose file for how we um, are running PostGIS and PG Admin uh, with a single command. So this OpenStreetMap to PostGIS notebook, it relies on GeoPandas and SQL Alchemy mainly. I also added a f um, progress bar to give some feedback because the, pr the processes in this notebook are pretty slow. The data are very large and take a while to upload. So we connect to our database instance. It's running locally in the Docker Compose file. Then we have a series of shape files I downloaded from GeoFabric. And for each of those, I, I want to kind of upload it to a specific table. So I'm just specifying that here. So it's explicit, it's obvious, and gives us the option to override those. Uh, so we have this whole mapping of shape files to databases. Then we parse all those um, since we, and I've got a little bit of an error here. I work on temporary. Um, um, since I don't want to work on this whole data set at once to, to run quick experiments, so I create temporary variables, but in case I forgot to clean that up. For each of those um, items in the table map, these dictionaries, we're going to open it as a GeoPandas geodata frame. We're going to set the op OpenStreetMap identifier as the index. I believe that carries through to um, the database data. I'll have to double check that off stream because this should preserve the index. Um, and we just essentially want to give the end user an idea that something's going on. So we'll print out the number of rows that this step is processing so they have an idea of the scope of this step. And then upload that to PostGIS. Now, if you notice here, this is a standard. Python 4 item in iterable loop, but we're actually, our iterable is this a helper function from the IPy progress bar package. And what it does essentially is just tracks the progress and displays this progress bar down here of how many steps there are. Now in our temporary uh, table map, I'd, I had just used two of those shape files, but there's something like 18 shape files here. So you would at least see, you know, like 60% progress through these. And for each of the rows, you're, you get a row count, so you get an idea of how um, long that step might take. And at the end of the uh, session, uh, in the end of the process, you have um, a wall time of how long it took. I might even print out 
um, the timing of each of the steps. And we're just trying to give the people feedback rather than just a small asterisk there indicating progress. So most of this code was already working yesterday, but just for context, that's it, how we're getting the data into PostGIS. And really, adding indexes is almost the same process. I created another dictionary uh, uh, mapping, uh, a list of mapping dictionaries. But this one, uh, are, these are the columns. Luckily, the GeoFabric data there consists in all of the data frames and all of the tables subsequently have the same column structure. We know uh, the feature class is important because we're doing subsetting the open street map data, like asking for places of worship or hospitals or supermarkets and things like that. And that information is in the feature class, or the F class column. And we're using just a standard B tree index, which would have been by default, but for our code to be um, more generic, I just made it explicit here. And for the geometry column, we're using a, a gist index. So that lets you do kind of bounding box queries and then more refined queries inside those bounding boxes. It's like a hierarchical tree of bounding boxes or something in my basic understanding. The main difference in this code is we're actually um, using our SQL Alchemy engine. We're creating a temporary connection. And for each of those um, tables, again, we're going to look at the essentially details of that table. I'm cleaning up as I go. We want to get the table name for that item. And essentially, we're going to iterate over those index columns because, again, each of the tables has the same structure. So, I'm sorry, for each of the tables, we're going to iterate over the index columns. So, we're going to make an index for each of those columns and then go into the next table. So, inside of the um, loop here, we're creating an index name. And by convention, it's um, essentially the name of the table, an underscore, the name of the column, an underscore, and IDX for index. I'm just following that convention. I'm just using a Python F string here to, to create that. And it's printing down here below to give the progress update. We're creating OSM buildings, F class, index, index, and, and then OSM buildings, geometry index. So you can see our column F class and our column geometry listed here, as well as progress going through all 18 of those tables. Um, this whole process is much faster than uh, the managing of the data and uploading the data. W the uploading of the shape files and processing those in batches takes about 12 minutes for all of Finland. And then the running of these indexes takes just over a minute. But it, so let's go ahead and just check out the rest of this. Uh, what we're doing is just preparing a SQL statement. Uh, I tried using, you know, to avoid um, potential a SQL injection or some kind of uh, bad practice. I tried using um, SQL Alchemy prepared statements for this. I just couldn't get it to work. It took like I had 30 minutes to just say, hey, I'm going to go back to have strings here. Because really all we need is just um, first check if the index exists because we might be running this on uh, data that already exists. Hey, Imperium, welcome. I'm just doing a summary <laughs> of today's session. Um, but I will be kind of streaming a little bit later. But I'm, it's nice to see a familiar face. So this SQL statement, first it checks the uh, for the existing index and then creates it. So we're just using that index name variable. We're telling it what table to create the index on, what index type to use, and the column to use, uh, the column to make to index, <laughs> essentially. Then with that connection, we're executing the SQL statement. Uh, the code is you know fairly clean and um, I think it will be easy to maintain and understand later if I come back to it. Um, you know, it would be nice to use those prepared statements instead of f strings, but I think since this is kind of not really expecting end user input or something like that, uh, and we're just using this to more or less kind of uh, cache the uh, OpenStreetMap data into PostGIS for querying and geoprocessing, uh, deriving, making derived geoprocesses. Um, I think it's relatively OK to use these F strings. Do I know how to hack? Uh, yes, I think my hacking style is to kind of figure things out slowly, avoid pulling my hair out or cr you know, like crying out of frustration, um, and just try things over um, the course of time from different angles until I, I kind of get something working and get to a stopping point. Um, I know that's not the conventional definition of hacking, but 
Um, my understanding of hacking is it's just a creative, it's another way of being creative, like making music or art or something like that. It's, you know, you're just figuring stuff out, you're making something, yeah, probably sharing your work, or, you know, baking uh, is another example. You, uh, in the kitchen you have lots of uh, interesting experiments and eventually they might be yummy enough to share. So we're hoping that soon this project will be pretty close. I'm going to try to have a prototype this weekend for the end-to-end deal, I have just got, got to get this data processing out of the way, so to speak, uh, getting the data into um, PostGIS so we can query it from Django and then send it to a JavaScript client. So that said, let's just take a look. Um, so yeah, just PG admins running. This is really cool, really powerful server administ- uh, Postgres server administration tool. Um, I don't, I'm not that familiar with it, but you can run queries from here. You can check your schemas, you can make sure things are indexed, you can check your triggers and Postgres extensions, you can see we've got our PostGIS extension installed. It's really cool. And I thought having that by default for new developers would be a useful feature. So the main thing here, um, as we've made changes to the Docker Compose file, uh, so our Postgres server uh, service, we just gave it a name so that you get nice printouts when you're, when you're starting up. And you can, so here's PG admin and Postgres printing stuff out. Uh, we're not really changing anything else here uh, except where Postgres stores this data. And I've, re- I've removed the, um, the volumes from both of these. I don't know the use of uh, volumes. They seem to store the data across sessions. If I um, tear down these, the Stalker Compose, I uh, say, um, and the services stop running, when I spin them back up, the data is still there. So I'm, I, I think the volumes are mainly for mapping local f- directories into your image if you need somehow having a shared uh, file system. If I'm wrong on that, I will put the volumes back. Uh, then we create a little network so that the PG admin can have visibility uh, into this Postgres service and give it a name, tell it which image to use, and specify some params, some co- configuration parameters with default values. I didn't know you could do that. I learned how to do that today. As well as specifying the port. I think we'll let it run on port 80 and connecting to the network, which is bridged over into, um, I don't know, it's just bridging between the two of those, I guess. Yeah, cool. I mean, coding is hacking. And I think hacking comes from the, uh, the sound it makes when you type on a keyboard. That's the, <laughs> it's just a way of being creative, just like, you know, you could call it playing your guitar strumming or something like that, or noodling is another kind of way. That's how I play guitar, is I noodle. So I think that's about it, and thank you for the segue. The poll request here is number 115, uh, and as uh, Imperium42 mentions, if you're interested in getting more focused on coding and involving yourself in some open source projects and getting around like-minded people, Stop by CodeBuddies.org. CodeBuddies is a great community. There's lots of groups forming about around almost any kind of technology or um, sort of different concepts like uh, data science and things like that. So higher level practices that involve technology. CodeBuddies is also an open source project on GitHub at GitHub.com slash CodeBuddies. If you'd like to get involved with this sustainable urban design project, stop by GitHub.com slash sustainable urban design. In any case, It's been nice uh, to see you, Imperium. Thanks for stopping in. I'll try to stream a little bit later tonight. I just need a break to decompress and think about the next steps for the project. So I hope you all are doing well out there, and that you stay healthy, keep on social distancing, and have a great day. Peace.